This is our unit on turns, angles, lines, symmetry and reflection. The focus for this unit is to understand the concepts of clockwise and anticlockwise, to revise 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, as along with quarter, half and three quarter turns, to briefly go over north, south, east and west, to revise the different size and names of angles, to look at what different lines are called, to look at lines of symmetry and reflecting shapes. Our objectives for this unit, that we can turn clockwise or anticlockwise for particular degrees. We can also identify angles based on their size. And we can even draw lines of symmetry for different shapes and the reflections across the mirror line. Turns. We're going to look at turns from the first point here. This is a 90 degree turn clockwise. It can also be called a quarter turn because it's a quarter of a circle. And we also use the language quarter turn clockwise. So 90 degrees, a quarter turn, a quarter turn clockwise. This is 180 degrees turn clockwise from here to here because two 90s are 180. It can also be called a half a turn clockwise or here half a turn clockwise. This one is a 270 degree turn clockwise. 90 at 90 at 90 is 270. It can also be called a three quarter turn clockwise. Written like this or written like this three quarter turn clockwise. This is a 360 degree turn clockwise, which is one complete turn. Going the other way, this is a 90 degrees anti-clockwise turn, a quarter turn anti-clockwise, written here again, quarter turn anti-clockwise. This is a 180 degree turn anti-clockwise or a half a turn anti-clockwise. This one, a 270 degree turn anti-clockwise, written as a three quarter turn anti-clockwise or written here, three quarter turn anti-clockwise. And finally, a 360 degree turn anti-clockwise. Here's a compass. We have north, east, south and west. Little rhyme I use is never eat shredded wheat. If you're standing facing east and you turn 90 degrees anticlockwise, where were you being facing? So we're looking at east, and we're going to turn 90 degrees anticlockwise, the one quarter turn. Where are you going to be facing? Hopefully, you'll have said north. If you're standing facing west and you turn 270 degrees clockwise, where will you now be facing? Imagine yourself facing this way. You're going clockwise 270 degrees is three quarter turn. Where are you going to be facing? Hopefully you said south. Here's a spinner. What does a spinner need to turn to get from the dragonfly, which is here, to the spider? Have a go. There are two options here. You could either do a three quarter turn clockwise or a quarter turn anti-clockwise. 
Moving on to angles. Here is a protractor and this measures angles. Any angles are less than 90 degrees are called an acute angle. So anywhere from zero to 89. Here's one here. This is showing 20 degrees. That's an acute angle. Looking at my protractor again, if anything is at 90 degrees, this is called a right angle. It's exactly 90 degrees. And normally we represent this by doing a little square in the actual angle itself, 90 degrees. Any angle that's more than 90 and less than 180 is called an obtuse angle. So from 90 to 180, an obtuse angle. And again, one is shown here. Hundred and eighty degree angle here is known as a straight line angle. Reflex angles are any angles that are more than one hundred and eighty degrees, but less than three hundred and sixty. So here we have an angle of three hundred and five degrees. Lines. There are two kind of lines that you need to know about at this moment. One's called perpendicular lines. And perpendicular are when two lines are crossed together and they form a 90 degree angle. And again, look, it's shown with a square here. You also need to know parallel lines. And these are two lines which will never ever touch, like train lines. They're the same distance apart and they keep going and going and going and going and going and going. And even if they went on forever, they would never touch. Lines of symmetry. Two D shapes can have what we call lines of symmetry. A line of symmetry is a line that you can draw through a shape, meaning that what you see on one side of the line is a mirror image of what you would see on the other side. So here, practically, if you were to put a mirror along a line of symmetry, the reflection you see in the mirror will be exactly the same as the part of the shape that the mirror is blocking from the view. So in other words, placing a mirror on the line of symmetry will leave the shape perfectly intact. Here are a selection of common shapes with their lines of symmetry. They're shown as red dashed lines. So for instance, if I were to put a mirror on the square here, what's reflected in the mirror will be the same. Equally on this diagonal line, if I were to put the mirror here, I would see a square in the mirror completed. On the rectangle, if I were to put a mirror here, I would get the complete mirror image of a rectangle in the mirror. So we would say for an equilateral triangle that it has three lines of symmetry. One here, one here, and one here. For a square, one, two, three, and four lines of symmetry. For a rectangle, one, two lines of symmetry. And you can see them for the other shapes as well. Reflection. You can reflect shapes across the mirror line. Imagine picking up the shape, flipping it across the red dotted line. So for this one here, I'd pick it up and flip it across and I would get the reflection of the shape. 
find a more complicated shape. Here is my shape here. This is the mirror line. I'm going to reflect it along this line here. So imagine putting a mirror here and redrawing the new shape. So pick it up and flip it over and draw the new shape in. And this is reflection. There are a number of worksheets for each of the units that I've put into this video. Have a go.